Hi Aquarius and Aquarius Rising, here's your horoscope for August 2024th. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, buckle up because we have a wild ride ahead of us. And this is because there's going to be a full moon in Aquarius right here in your first house of identity and self. And it will be squaring Uranus, your ruler at the fourth house. And it, of course, the sun will be opposing that. So there's a giant T-square that's occurring on the 19th that's going to bring in some monumental changes for many of you. So this reading is for anyone who has an Aquarius rising or has the sun in Aquarius. This is a general sun sign reading, a tropical western street reading, excuse me, using whole house systems. Again, it has to be general because I don't have everybody's birthday and everyone's birth chart and birth dates are different. Okay, but we have so much energy coming in this month and it begins at the beginning of the month with the new moon in the seventh house. So everything to do with relationships, connections to others, family dynamics, feelings, fa uh, you know, anything, extended family, uh, this is all on the table for many of you. There's, a, there's definitely a psychological component to this month where you might find yourself overly stressed out. So you need to be careful this month because Pluto is in your first house, retrograde, so there could be a confusing time about what you want, where you're going, I'm not sure what I want. And then Uranus, your ruler over here, is uh, basically on edge, uh, basically uh, in Taurus. And so it's making you more sensitive than normal. So we need to pay attention to what we're doing because this is a very explosive month. All right. So let's dive in and see what it looks like. So on the fourth, we have a new moon in Leo right here. It's going to be at 12 degrees of Leo. So wherever that is in your actual birth chart, that's the area that gets lit up. And so this new moon actually looks pretty good. There's, um, you know, it's very positive um, and it's connected to Mars and Jupiter. So there's optimism here about a relationship, about a situation, uh, could be the love life, could be yours, could be somebody else's in your life. You know, like your own children, or maybe a child is getting married, or maybe they're having a child, whatever it is, it looks really positive. Okay, so there's some interesting news coming in or maybe you're meeting somebody new, or maybe you're meeting several new people, because a new moon in the seventh house will open a doorway for that. Now, Venus is also there, so once again, it's suggesting something to do with possibly romance, or a business connection, or another person that comes into your life that um, you know, you're gonna be dealing with here, okay? And it does extend out to family as well. So this looks really positive, so I would look at that as an opportunity. And speaking of the moon, I found this online. I think uh, you guys might appreciate It's a free moon reading. So check it out. I, set, I left the link down below. Uh, they offer you a free mini reading. And of course, they want to kind of upsell you something. But that's okay. You don't have to buy anything. But it is a pretty good reading. I did get it. I did purchase it. I thought it was very interesting. So I figured I'd share it with you guys. All right. So enjoy the reading. Uh, and so this is this is like the really positive information or, or or news that's coming in at the beginning of the month but it quickly starts to turn venus enters virgo now virgo is very analytical very pessimistic you know and it's it's looking at every small detail so when it comes to this relationship or this partnership or whatever you got yourself uh into uh you get you're gonna be questioning it uh, and you may be wondering what's going to happen. Uh, maybe your thoughts turn to finance because the eighth house has to do with other people's finance as well. And this is where the psychological component comes in because Virgo is very analytical. It's in the eighth house. And right next to it is Mercury that's about to go retrograde as well in the eighth house. So on the same day, we also have Mercury going retrograde in Virgo in the eighth house. Now it makes this a little tricky is as soon as venus enters and mercury starts going retrograde they're immediately going to contact pluto in the first house and so this has directly something to do with your personality it has something to do with some sort of change happening to either yourself or other people around you there's absolutely a psychological and financial component to this so you may be overthinking something stressed out um you know maybe somebody in your life is is you know transitioning and making their way out of their physical suit and so this is going to be very strong uh, energy maybe somebody's ill virgo rules health so maybe there's somebody that's not doing well health wise and you need to care for them or you need to be around them to support them in some way that's the kind of energy that i'm seeing coming in here folks so pay attention 
Now, the energy really gets ramped up on the 14th because Mars will conjunct Jupiter in Gemini right there at 16 degrees. So uh, this is a lot of thinking. This is a lot to process. This is a lot of information. This is, you know, something new, or maybe you're juggling multiple things and you may be having fun with it on the one hand, but because it's going to be squaring Saturn in the second house here, you may have a lot of responsibilities on your plate and you're not sure what to do with them. And it's maybe causing you some stress. Okay. And this could be again about a child, about something new, a project, more responsibility at work, uh, communication with somebody that is, you know, that's gone awry. And so this square is something tough that's coming in that you're going to have to deal with. Then when we look at the other angle here, the other component of this is Venus is at 12 degrees. So the, this is actually making a connection to both of these two and Saturn. So we have a, the, the makings of a T-square here developing. And by the way, this will get a lot tighter in the coming days. So after the 14th. So now we have a T-square, which is pressure, which is responsibility, which is, you know, something new that's developing and you're not sure where it's going or what's going to happen here. And so there's a lot of confusion in the mix. We also have transiting moon here that's going to be in Sagittarius also opposing this. And so what we have going on on this particular day, beginning on this particular day, is we have a giant cross. It's called the Grand Cross in astrology, which is the heavy, heavy energy that's coming in. And this is what I mean, you know, by, uh, you know, a big transformational uh, month where um, we need to buckle up because there's so much energy coming in it's like a wild card of uh, possibilities here okay so mercury will backtrack into leo on the 15th so here it is it goes from virgo now back into leo so once again relationships are the themes here and so uh taking care of parents uh taking care of a, a partner um you know wondering about the past revisiting the past this is also a very strong possibility here because when we look at it 29 degrees right away neptune's at 29 degrees so these are making a connection right here this is called an, a quinconux or an inconjunct and it's also making an alignment to your uranus at 27 degrees and so these are a, a bit difficult alignments that are occurring here so maybe you're having to deal with a financial matter involving real estate or the home maybe you're dealing with um feelings related to a partner or somebody in your life that you're you know not sure about and so there's a lot of heavy energy on the table here in August that you're dealing with. And that's what I'm seeing here. And so it only gets heavier from here because on the 18th and especially the 19th, this full moon will be in your sign at 27 degrees of Aquarius. Now I had to put it to 18 so I could keep the um, rising sign in Aquarius, but um, this is going to be very strong for all of you. And so 27 degrees of Aquarius opposing the sun at 27 degrees of Aquarius. The Mercury retrograde will also be connected to the sun. So we've got some confusion. We've got something from the past that's resurfacing. We're, we're, we're looking to cut ties with someone or something that is just, you know, really giving us a, a big pain in the behind. But then when we look to the Uranus, your ruler, it's exactly 27 degrees all the way around. 27 moon, 27 sun. Uh, 26 mercury and 27 aquarius in taurus in the fourth house so something to do with real estate something to do with family matters something to do with siblings something to do with uh anything connected to real estate whether you're doing something inside or you're dealing with uh unruly family members whatever it is there's a lot of pressure here okay that's being that's being put upon many of you but there's no, this is not the only thing that's going on at the same time this is why it makes it so tricky venus will also be squaring jupiter so there's venus at 17 degrees squaring jupiter at 17 degrees once again this is a difficult alignment so we're again we're dealing with financial matters we're dealing with psychological issues but wait there's more we also have jupiter squaring saturn there's uh there's jupiter squaring saturn so we have another t-square on top of the other t-square so you could ask any astrologer, is this heavy energy? Is this going to be changing, you know, something about my life? You bet it is. But the only control you have is the way you view it, the way you deal with it. Okay, remember that. The universe likes to put pressure on us to see how we deal with things. And in time, these become easier because we understand the cycles and the patterns. 
but the these alignments that are coming in around the 19th are super strong and they will affect us now it may be something external outside of our control like the the, the stuff that's going on in politics today uh, we may have protests riots we may have military intervention we may have you know stupidity going on again uh, in the political the arena and so that may be something that we're all paying attention to as well but in your personal life it has absolutely do to do with your family your foundation real estate matters or psychological component uh worrying stress um you know like there's so much coming at you all at once and you're like oh my god i don't want to deal with this that's the kind of energy i see unfortunately coming in friends so do the best you can at least you're, you're getting a heads up here now the sun enters virgo on the 22nd that's not going to help much either because the sun is uh, usually very positive but it goes into virgo very pessimistic and very analytical and it's in the eighth house so now you're trying to figure out everything you're trying to make sense of it all and that's what virgo does and we have two planets in virgo in the eighth house so you're looking at the financial picture you're looking at planning you're looking at insurance you're looking at inheritance and yes the eighth house represents death and rebirth so maybe there's someone in your life that's checking out you know but look at the sun as soon as it enters virgo immediately hits pluto at zero degrees so once again we're seeing an alignment of unrealistic expectations fantasy uncertainty that's in the mix you see what i'm seeing friends i'm trying to give it to you straight you know without the sugar coating and so that that way you could deal with it uh, at an easier pace so we have the sun going through the four uh, the, through the eighth house so this is going to be a little tricky as well mercury finally goes direct on the 28th right there in stationary position before it moves direct and so this is going to help out a little bit very little because over the course of the next two weeks it'll leave leo then go into virgo as well so you know you're going to be over analyzing every aspect of your life from this month on into september so plan accordingly make sure you know what you're doing before you make these major changes in your life in august now venus enters libra on the 29th right there now this softens everything up quite a bit uh, Venus and Libra is all about peace and partnerships and wanting relationships to be copacetic and it's in the ninth house of feeling lucky and fortunate and maybe even traveling okay so this helps out a little bit okay feeling a little more optimistic and it does make a positive aspect to Pluto right here so there's definitely the possibility of uh, traveling there's definitely a possibility of learning something new uh, dealing with partnerships can start feeling a lot, whole lot better than they did the rest of the month okay so that's how it works so as you can see we're in for a wild ride in august and i'll be talking about this on my other video so please subscribe to my youtube channel anyway if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about astrology i have a little video at the end of this presentation that you might enjoy it's about my private community and uh, I hope everything works out for you. Have a great month and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now. Hi, thank you so much for watching my monthly astrology. I really appreciate your support over the years. Have you ever considered learning astrology? Well, you're in luck because I've created a full online astrology course in my private community. It's a full six module course that takes you from the beginning of astrology, what it all means, the mythologies, the houses, all the way to the more advanced techniques such as progressions solar returns how to how to read transits how to make predictions it's all there in this course here and i even dive into some of the mysterious stuff you know what some of the symbolism is all about so i think you might want to check it out if you're interested along with the course we have a very tight-knit community here where everyone helps each other out and so if someone knows a lot about astrology they help other people with astrology so it's a community that really gets involved and you know really wants to learn and help each other out but as you can see here i have a whole lot more on this uh, private community uh, i also have the inner circle live calls each week now this is something that i do twice a month on youtube but here i do them on a weekly basis and i talk about various topics you get to ask me questions we interact and we learn a whole lot more than just astrology so this could be anything from astrology to what's going on in the world predictions politics whatever it is 
We talk about it in the Inner Circle calls. Of course, I do have videos here that I do not have on YouTube, so you get, the, you get uh, those too. And then I've got a private resource vault, which has videos uh, that I suggest watching, books, suggested reading, meditations, and more. So if you're interested in learning astrology or want to be part of a great community that's really growing fast, head on over to the link down below and click on the link and join today. All right? Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.